Riley Nerds. Welcome back. Greetings. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm excited. I'm thrilled to introduce our next presenter. Bonita Sharif here is, is here from UNL, and she's going to tell us about how people interpret emojis, which um, I think we can all learn a lot from and also learn about the people that we are communicating with and might have had some difficulties with, potentially, right? So I'm going to turn it over now. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks, Cassie and Tyler, for inviting me here. Um, so uh, I am an assistant professor in the Computer Science and Engineering Department at UNL, and I direct the Software Engineering Research and Critical Studies Lab. How many software engineers are here? Any? One. Okay, that's you. Um, how many actually use emoji on a daily basis? Okay, almost all. So this applies to you all. Okay. Now you must be wondering. What is a software engineer, or what does a software engineer know about emoji? And I will like, answer that question at the very end, and why we did this study. <laughs> okay, so uh, I do want to acknowledge my uh, collaborators from the University of um, the Netherlands, and the Technical University, and I will show the pictures later on. So it was a collaboration. Uh, I did present this actually at an emoji workshop. There is something called Emoji 2019, which I did not know. <laughs> it is a real thing, I promise. And our paper, look, it's right here. It, it was published there, and I presented this in May. And now I'm going to read each and every word of that five-page paper. No. <laughs> so I'll give you the, the fun parts without actually going through. So those are my collaborators right there. Wesley did all the work. He was the grad student. He did all the number crunching. <laughs> Basically, he did what we told him to do. So really good at it. And he graduated, so awesome. Yeah. All right, so yeah, so uh, I am keeping this presentation PG-13. Okay, we're talking about emoji that represent emotion uh, that have faces like this. <laughs> Um, and I'll tell you why, as a software engineer, I was interested in this later on. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. I work at the intersection of human factors, software engineering, as well as an HCI. And I, so I try to see how developers work uh, and what they do while they're fixing bugs, while they are building new features, so we can build better tools for them. And I do this by using um, biometric devices like eye trackers, so we track how people actually look at code. I'm not going to talk about that here, but that's something what um, kind of motivated me to see how people actually interpret emojis. All right, so I want to make it clear we are talking about emoji and not emoticons, okay? <laughs> we have used emoticon, uh, emoticons before and they are different. Like The emoji is so beautiful, look at it. It has nuance to it, it looks pretty uh, as a picture, and so on. So. Uh, there is that difference there. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about our research question. Um, we were interested to find out whether an emoji itself is interpreted the same way consistently across the general population. In addition, we also wanted to know whether age and gender played a role. So if you were male or female, um, or uh, third agenda. We also took account for that. We didn't have many in that category, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, but also age, because I know, as a mom of a six-year-old and a 13-year-old, my six-year-old knows what certain emoji uh, mean, but I don't. And so that's not right. I should know. I have a lot to learn. Anyway, so those are our research question questions. Uh, what we did was we conducted a online study um, it was just a Google form. We asked the question, uh, basic question was below there, what emo emotion is this emoji display? And we had an open text box. You could write whatever you felt. They were asked not to look at anything up. Okay, they all, they, of course, they were asked the age and, and uh, to identify as male, female, or non-binary or other. They could type that in. Uh, but for each of those nine emoji right there, they were asked, what do you think this emoji represents in terms of emotion? And they were asked to write the first thing that came to their mind, okay, without looking up anything else. Um, because we wanted, we wanted this to be open-ended because we didn't want to put them in a box and say, okay, just choose among the list. Um, we also want to point out that emoji look different on different <laughs> platforms and different apps. Okay, so we used, in our study, the Apple version. 
Okay, as you can see here, the smiley face looks a lot different on different apps. I mean, people have preferences as well. There are also certain apps that change the gender. So if you have, if I send you a male smiling on certain apps, it will change to a female. I did not intend this, but it happens, and I've seen it happen. Okay, so this is also the case. Um, so, moving on. So a little bit about the survey. You use those nine emoji. Uh, we had multiple gender, uh, genders and age categories solve this uh, online. We, by the way, we advertised this on Facebook and personal connections, okay, so people could just take this survey. Um, we had a total of uh, about 386 people take the survey. They were non, none of the questions were required. They could just fill out as they went. Um, we had in total approximately 3,000 responses. We also had responses in different languages because, like I said, my collaborators are from the Netherlands, so a lot of people speak you know, Portuguese, apparently, and some French, some Russian, and so on. So our data set was kind of multilingual. Uh, and, and this was the fun part, right? The fun part was putting out the survey, setting it up, and contacting people to do this. But then we realized we are in big trouble because we have all of this text data that's open-ended. What are we going to do with it? How are we going to interpret this data, right? So the way we do that is through labeling. So we sat as authors of the paper for 22 hours. Okay? This was not fun. Okay, we had a lot of disagreements, but we sat down and actually tried to agree among all of us uh, what people wrote as to what they actually meant with the emotion. And to do this, uh, uh, the, on the right you see the chick's wheel, and it has the eight basic emotions of joy, it's the second wheel in there, so I'll read them out. Joy, trust, fear, surprise, sadness, disgust, anger, and anticipation. And we tried to um, have each of the responses labeled into one of those categories. By the way, the further you get from that wheel, the more intense the emotion gets. Okay, that's what it basically means. Okay, so we had people who were fluent in certain languages actually code the language that they were fluent in. So if I didn't know French, I would not code French. And then we had an inner reader reliability agreement, so at least a majority of the two of the coders needed to uh, agree in order for that to actually hold. And this is standard in, in research coding. All right, so after this intense activity, um, oh, by the way, we also had three additional categories, like if something was not an emotion, so you could choose that, lack of emotion, not possible, or lack of awareness, meaning people just did not know it was, or were not aware of what it was, okay? That was kind of the, the fallback category. Um, okay, so just to show you some of the weird answers we got in the. In the uh, so somebody wrote a pig from Angry Birds, sorry, no idea. <laughs> we labeled that as lack of emotion. <laughs> and there were just some, they were pretty like, funny. It was quite entertaining. Yeah. All right. So, and think about it, we had 3,000 of these, so that nice. took a while. All right, so are you ready for the results? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a question and answer thing. I want people to, you know. So what do you think? The, this is the angry face with, these emoji have names. So if you go to Emojipedia, this is actually the pouting face emoji. What do you think? Did people consistently think that this was anger? Between yes. age and gender. Yeah. Yes. yes? Yeah. You are correct. Mm. Next one. Unamused face. That's what the side eye is actually supposed to be. What do you think? No. Who say yes? Loud shot. Yes. Yeah. No? no. Yeah. Okay, more no. Okay, that's right. It is no. So what did we find? The younger you are, you represent this as, or you think of it as anger. Okay. Older people took it as disgust or some other emotions, including sadness. So there is no clear consistency among age here. Okay, so, but there was no difference between male and female. It was just age in this case. Because we accounted for these factors. We did, I assure you, we did the correct stats to actually get this. We used the guidance.
chi-square test for this, if anyone knows what that is. Uh, and this was a peer-reviewed paper. What about the next one? This is the <laughs> causated phase. Yes or no? Yes. That's a good. <laughs> All right, the next one. Face screaming in here. Here? Yes? No? <laughs> You're right, it's, it's no, because if you were younger, you think this is surprise, which is actually the correct meaning of this emoji according to the definition. Uh, but if you are uh, older, you think this is fear. Okay, and then I have a table there that actually shows the, the differences, the counts between the age range. What about the next one? Face with tears of joy. This is kind of yeah. given, everybody says that's yes. That's okay. yeah, correct. <laughs> uh, neutral face? <laughs> <laughs> yes? No. Yes? No. No, no, yeah, not sure. This was actually yes. Okay. <laughs> Everyone said this was a face that just had no emotion. You just like, whatever. <laughs> uh, crying face? Yeah. Oh, that's right. And I think this is the last one. Face with open mouth. Second question. Yeah. So how many people are below 40 here? What do you think? Or? And the others? This was actually consistent, believe it or not. Okay. So they thought it was, you know, um, so I'm coming closer to read it. So it says, a yellow face with small open eyes and large round mouth uh, representing surprise or shock. That was the definition. So everyone said that for this. Oh, this is the last one, I think. Uh. Face with rolling eyes. Yes? Yeah. Consistent? These people say no. Uh, uh. Is good. Yes, no? No, it is not. So if you are male, you think that this is just nothing, it's just neutral, it's like whatever. <laughs> but if you're female, you think this is anger. And this is actually consistent with the previous study some other social science researchers did. Why is that? I don't think it's anger when I look at it, so I might be an outlier. But this is the case what we found. All right, so, just bringing them all up here together. There we go. Um, just a table that shows you which um, actually we agreed upon. So for the most part, a lot of the emojis uh, made sense to use um, if we want to determine uh, emotion. So remember the question we asked people, what is the emotion you feel when you first look at this emoji? Right? The reason we did this because is because as a software engineer, it, software engineering, when you build software, as you know, some of the people that raise their hands, it is not an activity that you sit and do by yourself alone. It is very much a social activity. It, um, and this is um, publicized by GitHub, you know, where you have the social coding, you interact with people. It is no longer the case that you have somebody just coding by themselves in their mom's basement. And it's not even just a white guy that's sitting there, right? <laughs> I mean, I am a software engineer, I certainly am not sitting in my mom's basement coding, right? So it is very much a social activity, and one of the things software engineers used to communicate via team messaging and things of that sort, like Slack, if you've heard of that, uh, is emoji to actually have to, to, to uh, communicate with maybe the domain, maybe features and, and whatnot. So we wanted to understand, one of the projects I'm working on is understanding how software engineers are aware of their own emotions while they are actually building software. And we wanted to conduct a study to prompt software engineers every, let's say, five minutes, asking them, how do you feel? And we wanted to do that using an emoji as a picture. But if we didn't use the correct ones, we would not be able to actually get the correct response. So the first step was 
No. Can we use the emoji to, to actually have people choose? So imagine yourself fixing a bug. After five minutes, you get a pop-up with these emoji asking you, choose how you feel right now. And if you don't interpret you know, that rolling eye emoji as something as disgust, then you will choose the wrong one. Okay, so from here, we learn that we cannot use face screaming in fear if we have an age demographic that's across the board, and we cannot choose face rolling eyes between males and females. Okay, so this is very important in research because it completely throws your study results out the door if you don't use the right prompt. Okay, so we're actually using the results of the study as a first step in my research on emotional awareness uh, in understanding how developers work. Okay, and I promised you the connection and that that's what it was right there. So um, final thoughts, so we need to be aware of you know, the fact that maybe when we communicate via emoji, people might not re correctly understand uh, what uh, we actually mean, especially across demographics. We definitely have, this is just the first study, we might need to understand how this affects, uh, 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 other factors affect it, like demographics, I know even culture influences it quite a bit. Uh, there are people in China that use emoji very differently than people in the U.S. or other countries. Okay, and again, my collaborators, you cannot do research in a vacuum. I love collaborating with uh, people both in the U.S. as well as internationally. It just makes the research much more um, interesting. And with that, I will take questions. Yes, the social side. Okay, so the question was, uh, did I look into how people uh, are using emoji in the social aspect, like texts and... Or how social media could be, you know, have you considered social media influencing how emojis are interpreted? Um, yes, but I have to collaborate with the social scientist for that. <laughs> Definitely. But So that's very interesting. components to describe this image so you have eyes and mouth and colors of the images. So what is the most important component to describe the image and the, the people to say some emotion from the image? Is there any study about that? So the question was, uh, each emoji can be represented in a different color and, and other attributes that make it unique to a certain person, let's say. Uh, and the question was, are there any studies about that? Yes, there are. In fact, there were at least two presentations at the Emoji 2019 conference I went to, where people talked exactly about that and how we are not doing enough, not even companies are doing enough. Like, if you use your phone right now, you have the, G, the board, you know, where you have the Emoji keyboard. Even that, you will not necessarily find everything you want in the right way. So they are working on it, they know it's a problem. I know Google has a whole team that actually works solely on that. So there is, so you'll see that come out in the near future. Yes. I'm wondering if I'm in the minority here in my um why it might be perpetually single, but I always think of including the angry emoji, everything has like a layer of comedy involved and it's got an emoji. Is that, is that a common train of thought? <laughs> so the question is if you, so let me un understand the question <laughs> correctly. So did you ask if if you use an emoji, it's always comedy involved? Or I, I tend to personally think that and I realize that's probably not true. Like no, it's not true. true. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you personally it's not true the way I do. <laughs> Do, do you all think about it? No? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I can like I know I will deliberately use an emoji. So yeah, to punctuate a joke or like be goofy, but it's because I feel like ironic using it, I guess, in certain situations. But that's probably just me thinking I'm being clever when I'm doing really <laughs> that. So I can I can comment a little bit. So we we do use the app called Discord in our team in my in my lab actually, and we use emoji there quite a bit. And it's not always in a joking way. I mean, sometimes it is, but we use it in a looking. I use it in a quite a serious way sometimes. Maybe I just experienced it in the early years. That's how I felt emojis were used, and they never changed. Yes, yes, it's been transposed into that. You know, the comedic space of, of using it to express yourself. So are you saying we are old? I'm old. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that you could be right. Yeah. I mean, in terms of when you got exposed to it. Yeah. Other questions? I know I have a question. I'd like to ask you a question. So, so you mentioned the eye rolling was one of the ones where if you were younger it's interpreted as anger, right? So my, is it anything to do with like teenagers just always furiously rolling their eyes at things and just being annoyed constantly? I'm wondering if where that anger like you know, it comes from. I don't know. Personally, I think yes, because I have a teenager right now and I get a lot of eye rolling. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Any more questions? Awesome. Well, let's thank Anita, everybody. Thank you. All right, we're going to take another drink interim break, and then we'll be back with Carl for a free beer. Hooray!